Welcome back, everybody, to episode three of Shadowrun Returns. All right, everybody, and welcome back to Shadowrun. So this is part three, and I hope you guys don't mind the voices. I'm really liking the voices. Let me know. Um, and uh, like I said, I'm recording a bunch of these, so it may be a few episodes that you have to put up with something before I actually switch it. But uh, this is a fun game. I'm having a lot of fun, and I hope you're enjoying watching it. All right, so next up, we have the Redmond Barons. Run in the Seattle sprawl, and sooner or later, you'll find yourself in the Redmond Barrens. It doesn't matter your business. The Barrens doesn't like you. Take one part radioactive wasteland, three parts dog-eat-dog -dog slum, add a dash of tourist trap, and you've got a recipe for mean as hell. You leave the sanitized death and formaldehyde of, the, of organ grinders behind, entering the anarchy and desperation of the streets. Jake stops a moment to breathe deeply, filling his lungs with motorcycle exhaust, radioactive dust, cordite, and who knows what else. He exhales with an expression of wry contentment. The stench and grime tell him he's home. My stash is just around the corner in the alley. Is the bus stop here? Looking for a date, honey? Alright. Hidden in the garbage strewn alley is a high tech safe with a mag card reader on the front. Open the safe with Jake's mag card. With a smooth hiss, the safe opens to reveal a collection of gear that is a perfect match for your skills. You take the gear. How do you know what my skills were? Hand over the loop, bro. So welcome to the Barrens. I guess I'll need to find a new spot to hide my gear. Good dead drops are so hard to keep. He chuckles. <laughs> well, at least they're... At least they were too dumb to break into my maglock. Now that you got some gear, let's go deal with those Halloweeners. Alright, so we've got a couple of karma to spend here. I think we're going to save it up. Two karma isn't all that much. So we'll go ahead and we'll save that for now. I just happen to notice that here. And uh, Jake doesn't have any karma. So let's go ahead and continue on. Alright, so we've got a couple of people we can talk to. Let's talk to the worried man. The man before you appears well-mannered, but nervous. Excuse me, sir. I don't know you, but you look like you can handle yourself in a fight, and we need some help. What's your problem? Some thugs are shaking down the market, and we've set up here. It's getting worse lately. I don't think we can afford to pay them anymore. But no one will stand up to them, and the Lone Star is about to get involved. Where's this market you're at? It's just down the street, sir. Please. Our livelihood depends on the market.
Dr. Sarah. Her clothes may be dirty, but this woman is far from downtrodden. Hey, it's not my business, but I wouldn't go that way. What? What's going on? Just some Halloweena stirring up trouble again. She points to the south. They rode in this morning like the, on those fancy bikes. Set up camp, and they did in the old street market. They've been marching up and down the street all day, shaking down anyone that wanders past. Typical. Well, odds are those guys, those are the guys we're after. Anything else I should know about these gangers? Hmm. Well, the lead is a big old troll named John Paul. He's a real piece of work, even for a wiener. Yeah, that's him. Jake checks his pistol. They're going to be in for a rude surprise. You might want to step out. She looks over at you, then nods. Don't need to worry about me. I know how to lay low. They're a tough bunch, though. Don't say I didn't warn you. Thug attempts to use his bulk and hideous breath to intimidate the shopkeeper. The old woman is holding firm, but you can see that Thug's patience is fading fast, and he looks like he's about to start breaking things. Yeah, who the hell are you? Hmm. I heard about you. Why don't you piss off? You ain't a Halloweena. Why don't you buzz off? Business. Dusty News gonna get me paid. I knew you were just looking to cause static. Dash. Ice. This guy. Ooh. Miss James, I can now thank you enough. I hate to see bloodshed, but those men wouldn't take no for an answer. We simply had to make our way in this world. Shopkeeper holds out a few mewing. Please, it's the least they can do. I always take the mewing. Century. Hey, asswipes! Take another step forward and we're gonna plant you right there. This is Halloween up property now. This is one of the two that got away. If he hadn't have missed my shot, if I hadn't have missed my shot, these idiots would be given up and moved on by now. Halloween Century. Wait a minute. You're rolling with Jake? Bad idea, Chema. The Halloween is collecting that bounty. And killing you? Well, that's just a nice bonus.
Alright, spells. Minus eight hit points to cast. Let's cool down. Whoa, Uncle, Uncle, I just play with you. Call it the rest of Halloween, Jake. Call it even, yeah? Who do you think, Jake? He smirks. Heh, <laughs> I'm already a shoot on site status with these guys. Killing John Paul means little ass wiener to shoot me in the back while I'm buying smokes. Hell, they would be doing the same to you as soon as there's profit in it. You're right, let's finish this. Anything to look at here? I don't really look at it like it. Let's talk to Dan the Donut Man. The smell of fried fruit, powdered sugar, and slightly burned soy cap is almost enough to overpower the dusty sewage stents of Redmond streets. The troll work of the stand is covered in food stains older than he is. What can I get you, Chema? Did you see the murder in the alley across the way? Nope! I was closed when it happened. But hey, it's the Barons. The back alley's killing nothing new around here. The only reason cops are making a big deal about the Ripper business is some of those victims are real people. You know, folks with sins. You tell me about the Barons. The Barons? Hell, if you have to ask, you probably shouldn't be out here. This stretch we're on is called Touristville, though. And I suppose it's the closest thing around here to respectable. A few muggings. And you might even... And you might even survive the night... You might even survive drinking the water if you're lucky. Wouldn't recommend it, though. Scratches his armpits. Now behind me, that's the Seamstresses Union. You want drinks, drugs, favors, or information around here? The union's your spot. Hell, that place is the reason I'm in business. Folks get the munchies when they potty. Miss Kabuto owns the joint, and she's quality. A hard woman, but fair. Let's 
talk to Bobby. Hey, Chema. Got some tasty morsels for you. Just what every well-dressed shadow runner should have in his back pocket. Let me see what you have. It's got kamikaze, which is a combat stim to increase body plus two, strength plus one, and willpower plus one for five rounds. It's also got nitro, strength and willpower plus two, and charisma intelligence plus two, for, sorry, minus two for five rounds. Now, this is great in the fact that they do provide you a benefit. The problem is, kamikaze and nitro, I know from Shadowrun, they're drugs. We're talking to a drug guy, and taking drugs can be very, very bad. So that's definitely not something we want to do. Let's go talk to Sally. Let's see what Sally's got to say. Dwarf Merchant is packing up her stand for the night. I'm closed. Come back tomorrow. You've got a great view of that alley across the street. I don't suppose you saw the murder that happened there. She grunts, sure. It was closing up when I heard a series of explosions from behind the Union. A couple of seconds later, this guy comes out, runs across the street. Didn't get a good look at him. Then all the leaks in the alley exploded all of a sudden. Things got pretty quiet after that. Let me guess, you didn't go running over to see if that guy was okay? Hell no! Around here, that kind of thing gets you killed. Uh, uh, no problem. Sounds of laughter and music emanate from within. But you should finish your investigation first. It was already over there, already over there. Ooh. Sorry about that, everybody. For some reason, it just minimized. Alright. I seem to have a problem with that. Ever since I upgraded my computer. It seems to be getting better, though. I've been trying to figure out all what's causing it, but... Don't go to the market. Don't go to the market. Well, I want to go to the market. Alright. Those guys aren't doing much talking. As you approach the scene of Sam's murder, Jack spies the flashing red and blue lights up ahead. Whoa, hold up a minute. Lone Star is above collecting on a corp-issued bounty. And the one that's on my head isn't going away anytime soon, he says. Sorry, friend. I think this is where our paths diverge. Thanks again with the help for those Halloweeners. Here's your payment. They don't take me in where I'm going. And, if, and you look like you could use the funds. Sorry, Chema. My, not my style. Besides, you seem like you can take care of yourself. Hey, one more thing. When you're done checking out your pal's crime scene, pop into the Sea Mistress's Union. It's just down the street. You need gear, information, or just damn stiff drink. That's the place to be. Best dive this side of Chicago. I used that place as a base of operations for years back in the day. Make the right friends there, and I'm sure you'll get to the bottom of this ripper business. Hell, oh, nice knowing you. Jake's leaving me. The bright yellow police tape cuts through the darkness, directing your eyes to the white chalk outline and the dark red stain marking the slab of pavement where Sam Watt died. Standing at the entrance of the alley is a Lone Star officer. The cop looks cold, hungry, and irritated at the homeless man who's currently pestering him. 
I keep telling you. I need to get my stuff from the alley, or I'm gonna die in the cold night. Officer sighs, and I've been trying to explain to you that this is an official Lone Star investigation, and I can't let anyone in here. Hey, I got rights. Look, you sinless garbage, I've got a job to do. Find a new blanket, or I'll find a reason to use my stun baton. Typical. I hate you pigs. He looks in your direction. Now what? What, they didn't radio you? Damn, operator's probably asleep again. I'm here to take over your shift. You can head back to the base. Yeah, where's your uniform? Come on, completely I'm not with Star's, the Star Private Security Contractor Temporary Assignment. Sounds like your boss is short a few guys this week. Yeah, we've been sped pretty thin lately. Anyways, it's about fragging time someone showed up. Thanks for the relief. The streets have not been kind to this man. But they've also hardened him. The man's clearly a survivor. The one's wrestling with the onset of age and arthritis. You! I saw you over there with that rat bastard cop. What do you want? Know anything about the murder that took place here? He squints at you, suspicious. You a copper? You're working for some corp. Nope, I'm as sinless as you. Mind answering a few questions? Hey, what makes you think I'm sinless? Ha, oh, just messing with you. Of course I'm sinless. System ID number, my ass. What kind of questions you got? Did you see the murder? Nope. Can't say, and I can't say I'm sorry I missed it. I was hauling crates with Miss James up in the market. I can't carry as many as I used to, so it took a while. Get back here in time to see a couple of tourists puking all over my home turf. By then, that jerk face in the uniform already set up shop in my back alley. Well, it sounds like you live in this alley. Sure, for the last couple of months I've been sleeping there, but I spend my days going out on odd jobs with street merchants and panhandling tourists over near the seamstresses union. What else did you see that night? Hmm, well, you know, early in the night I saw a big and ugly troll in a green hospital scrub snooping around the block. He bought some donuts and two cups of Sokia off Dan over there. Seemed nervous. He did everything with his left hand because his right was all screwed up with some cyberware. Can you tell me more about the troll's cyberware? Well, it was big. And I think it must have had some hospital attachments because I saw some needles. It was a lot like the one back I saw back in 44 when I got captured by the elves. They did all sorts of experiments on me. Let me tell you, never trusted one of them cyber people. That's all I need to know, thanks. See you around. This looks like a coat and blanket from the old man was trying to get back. Examine the area for evidence. As you shuffle the bundle of cloth aside, a printed receipt falls up from beneath the fold of the blanket. It's a bar receipt from the Seamstresses Union dated two days ago at 3.02 a.m. Right around the corner is reported time of death. Customer, Sam Watts. Service name is listed as Coyote. Pick up the coat and blankets. My stuff, mighty decent of you. I don't see that kind of thing too often out here. Amidst the shards of glass from the broken lights, you find a small piece of glass which looks like the bottom of a test tube. There's two distinct, distinct sets of footprints. The humans, ending at the chalk outline, and the largest set, possibly orc or troll, following just behind the first. This work light's new. You can see that all over the alley the normal lights have been ruined. Upon closer inspection, it seems they've all imploded as if some force shattered them all at the same time. Alright, 
Alright, what's next? Let's go talk to Dan again. Maybe, what's it to you? Sell a lot of donuts to a lot of people. I know how Lone Star profiles metahumans. They tell them about the troll that bought the donuts from me right before the murder. They'll haul them in just to see if anyone got to pay for bail. Not today, my friend. Not today. We'll see her ad. I'm just going to see if I can give him the donut. Okay, so I'm trying to find the coyote at the seamstresses union. All right. You're about to leave the barons and enter the seamstresses union. Would you like to proceed? Confirm. All right, everybody, that's going to be it for today's episode. The next episode will be going into the Seamstresses Union. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. And uh, like I said, leave it in the comments. Let me know what you think, what you think of the voices, and what you'd like to see me do, changes you'd like to see, maybe a different way that I'm playing the game or things like that. Maybe you'd like me to go back and try different things. I want to see all that in the comments. Let me know. All right. Have